Matt Brown here from uh, the band Dead Parade and Matt Brown's Guitar Studio. We are going to be looking at Slave New World by Sepultura. So this is off the Chaos AD album, one of my favorite uh, metal albums of all time. So if you haven't heard it, uh, maybe go back and give it a listen. I think it's, it's really awesome. So anyway, let's go back to the beginning of this song and, and get after it. We are tuned down every string a full step. So every string down. Beginning of the song is super simple. We're just going to play power chords and we're playing at a really slow tempo. Uh, I'd say around 60 beats per minute. So all we're doing here at the beginning is... That's it. And we're going to do that a total of four times. So we're doing an E5 power chord. An F sharp power chord and a G power chord. These are all three strings. So open 2-2. Two, 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 four, four, and then you've got your G5 at uh, the third and fifth frets. Okay, so uh, let's, let's check out the main riff now. So that's the main riff at tempo. Uh, all we're doing, it's really simple. We're, we're down picking in 16th notes. Um, so slowly. So basically all a measure of 16th notes except for the last two where you're sliding from a B5 down to a B flat five. And these are just two string power chords here. All right, so the next little part, uh, the sort of uh, little interlude before the vocals start is this. So that's an E, F sharp five, G five. And then the next time you play E five, G five, and B flat five. And the B flat five is six, eight, eight. Um, all right, so after that, what you're gonna do is uh, the, the main riff, the type deal, that happens four times. And then what we're going to have is another kind of like uh, transitional section, which sounds like this. So uh, for those of you uh, theory people, this is kind of implying like uh, an E Phrygian dominant kind of kind of sound. So uh, first, uh, or sorry, first you're going to do an E five, then an F five to a G sharp five. So. So that happens three times. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hold this F5 power chord for a total of eight beats. And then we have the next riff. So let's check that out. So this riff, um, what we're doing is, it's a really simple but really cool idea. Uh, we're doing, so that's a hammer-on open to one and then you're picking the one again. And then you're doing the exact same idea an octave higher. So that's a two to three. And he puts a little vibrato in the three there, so. So that's all there is to it. it I just think that sounds really cool. It's a really cool idea. Uh, then what they're going to do after that four times is a power chord version of that riff. So what they're doing here, um, you kind of have to use what's called a spider fingering, uh, which I learned from Dave Mustang, where you're playing the E5 here with your, your middle finger on just uh, the two lowest strings. And then what you're doing is you're hammering on the pinky finger and the first finger to an F5 power chord. And then, you know, at the end of the, uh, or the second measure of the riff, you're just strumming the E5 power chord. So that's done. Uh, that's how that's done. You have to do the hammer-ons with kind of a weird set of fingers to get that riff happening. Okay, let's move on and check out the next riff. Alright, 
So, a uh, really simple riff. What we're doing is we're taking two string power chords, E5 to F5, sliding up and then strumming that F5 again. Then the in-between measures, you're going to strum an E5 power chord and hold it for a full measure. So this chord is played open 6th string, then 7 nine, so 3 strings. Alright, let's move on. Check out the next one. So there's the next riff. Uh, this is probably my favorite riff of the song. One of my favorite metal riffs of all time. It's really cool. So all you're doing is uh, uh, palm muted and non palm muted uh, low open E notes, and then the pinky is going to slide from the fifth fret up to roughly the twelfth. All right, then when the band kicks in, um, the non-palm muted E notes are going to become power chords like this. I, I don't know, things don't really get much heavier in my book, so I really like this. Um, then sort of what they do is a rhythmic variation where they double the beginning of the riff uh, on top of itself like this. Alright, so uh, the second guitarist, uh, Andreas, he's uh, coming in with a solo here at this point, so we'll talk about that little solo. So that's the, the beginning of this, and this is just played out of uh, the E harmonic minor scale. Uh, so what we're doing is we're playing octaves on the fifth and third strings. Um, and he's doing this with his whammy bar to get some vibrato. I'm on a Les Paul, so I'm just doing normal vibrato. So we have six and eight. Seven and nine, nine and eleven, and then when we come back down, we're going to do ten, nine, seven, as far as the root notes in the fifth string go. So all together. So that happens twice, and then we're going to do this little sliding uh, power chord deal, uh, and I'll play that for you. All right, so that's it, uh, tempo. I'll break it down for you slowly now. So these are uh, fourth shapes. Um, so basically playing at one note on your third string and then at the next fret higher on the second string. So this is gonna start at the seventh and eighth frets. Uh, the eighth fret will be your, your lower of the two strings. So we're gonna go, uh, uh, as I explain this, I'm just going to talk about the lower of the two notes, uh, so the third string. So we're going to slide up to eight, uh, from eight to nine, and then nine back to eight. And then we're going to pick the, uh, the eight, so. All right, after that, we're going to slide 11 to 12, and then back from 12 to 11. All right, the next part, we're going to slide 12 to nine. And then the last little bit is 9 to 8. So we have this. All right. Uh, the last measure of his solo is played a little bit differently, so I'll play that for you real slowly um, or explain it. Uh, it's What he's doing is... So that much is the same. The first beat... Then in eighth notes, he's playing this power chord. Then playing just a C note at the fifth fret. And what he does is he slides all the way up to the 21st fret of this string. And then the last notes are played at the 22nd fret of your highest string. So it's how the end of that measure sounds. So that's what it sounds like in a tempo. All right, so that takes care of the solo section. Let's uh, check out some more of these rhythm riffs that uh, happen. Mm -hmm. 
where the rhythm guitar or what Max Cavalera is playing, yeah, you're just gonna play the, the main riff, the So that happens for a while and then you're gonna do this uh, ending. And that's how it ends. So that was your E5, F5, and G sharp five, all three strings. Uh, and then you wanna give that last one a staccato and accent. You know, and that ends the song. Uh, Andreas, his part, let's take a look at that now. All right, so that's what he's playing. He's just basically playing, uh, say, uh, a diminished triad there. Uh, you know, you can think of it a couple of different ways, B flat, G, or C sharp diminished, whatever, all the same thing. Um, so this is 12, 11, 9 on the three high strings. Um, he's letting them all ring together and giving vibrato with a whammy bar. And again, since I don't have a bar on this guitar, I'm just doing it with my hands. <laughs> That's all he's doing there. And then at the end, the, the very last measure, he's playing that measure with the other guitar. All right, so that does it for Slave New World. Uh, if you'd like the tabs, hit me up and we can talk about that. And uh, hopefully gonna teach a few more songs from this album. It's, like I said, one of my favorite metal albums. So uh, hope you like this one, all right? Uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe and give me a like. All right, see you guys around.